So looking at the whole area of, of addiction and what brings us into addiction, what purpose addiction serves and the various kinds of addiction is very much part and parcel of, of my work as a psychotherapist. Um, I, I'll refer to a poem later by John O'Donoghue um, for an addict. Um, but just, just before we get to that point, um, when something isn't well in our lives, so maybe it's something almost at a soulful level that we are aware that something isn't going well, we're not maybe connected very well to ourselves, we're trying to cover something up. I'm thinking of actually just as I'm talking, a line from Bob Dylan's The Tambourine Man, um, and I think the tambourine man was the drug dealer, and, and, and so um, the person singing the song was, was waiting for drugs. And one of the lines is, please help me to forget about today until tomorrow. And that's I think, captures almost all of the, the life of an addict. Please help me to forget about today until tomorrow. Because if, whether it's a substance addiction or whether it's a behavioural addiction, so like it could be a substance addiction like cocaine or alcohol or heroin or hash or it could be a behavioural addiction like gambling or sex or work. Work is quite a, a big one and it's quite covered up I suppose. But whatever it is, it keeps us away from, from our true selves and somehow we're afraid to connect with our true selves and so we go in and we get, we get wrapped up in either a behaviour or, 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 or in a substance that takes us away and helps us, like in that line of the song, please help me to forget about today until tomorrow. I think it's one of the saddest lines in any music. And John O'Donoghue in this poem for an addict, he likens the situation of an addict going to get the the escape, um, he knowing that it won't bring us happiness, and we know that. But he likens it to the moth that's attracted to the flame, and even though it's going to kill it, the moth can hardly stop itself being attracted to the flame, and somehow that if we if we can kind of realise that, if we can stop and ask us, what's behind our addiction? What purpose is it serving? That if we begin to work at it from that level, that my experience is that that's very useful in trying to beat it in the longer term. For an Addict by John O'Donoghue On its way through the innocent night, the moth is ambushed by the light, becomes glued to a window where a candle burns. Its whole self, its dreams of flight and all desire, trapped in one glazed gaze. Now nothing else can satisfy but the deadly beauty of the flame. When you lose the feel for all other belonging, and what is truly near becomes distant and ghostly, you are visited and claimed by a simplicity sinister in its singularity. No longer yourself, your mind will be owned and steered from elsewhere now. You will sacrifice anything to dance once more to the haunted music with your fatal beloved who owns the eyes to your heart. These words of blessings cannot reach even as echoes to the shore of where you are. Yet, may they work without you to soften some slight line through to the white cave where your soul is captive. May some glimmer of outside light reach your eyes to help you recognise how you have fallen for a vampire. May you crash hard and soon onto real ground again where this fundamentalist shell might start to crack for you to hear again your own echo. That your lost, lonesome heart might learn to cry out for the true intimacy 
of love that waits to take you home, to where you are known and seen, and where your life is treasured beyond every frontier of despair you have crossed.